After signing audio source to our player, now since the gun is child of our player, we can also attach audio source directly to our gun as well. But in this case, let's just attach it to our player. We drag and drop our audio file and assign it in the audio clip. Then we assign our audio source component to our ammunition script as we will be playing our sounds via our ammunition script. Now if we play, we, uh, I can hear the sounds. But I still felt that the sound effect was a bit lengthy so I opened audacity and had the audacity to shorten our clip by trimming the ending of our wavelength a little bit. I then imported the trimmed sound effect file and it seems finer now but please do remember this is only for educational purposes all credits go to the original sound effects creator that I took this asset from. Cool? Let's move on. And ouch. Live saving tip. Get in the habit of saving each step of your workflow process. Especially if you are not using source control or version control. This also applies to every other software practices out there. Next is the animation part. I removed all the previous animations and for player movement I am going to use 3 animations for now. Forward, backward and idle aiming. I created a blend tree in my animator under our base layer and added a single parameter named speed factor. Then I realized we have to move sideways also and I imported left and right movement animations from Mixamo as well. Now instead of using one dimension we use two dimensions because we need input from two parameters and that means using our WS keys for forward and backward movement and AD keys for left and right movement. Then I assign the threshold values of each parameter as shown here. Let's play now and see where we have reached. And this is worse than I thought. Pretty sure this would be the case in space but we are not there yet so if we apply vertical input from our mouse our player literally walks in air. Let's rectify that. So what happens is when we apply a vertical axis input from our mouse to our player's entire body, its entire body is influenced by it whereas we only want our upper body to be directed based on our input. So I searched Mixamo for aim up and aim down animations, luckily I didn't find anything that we could use. So what do you do when you can't find stuff on the internet? You create it. Like I said before, don't reinvent the wheel but it's, if it's not there you have to create it. So I imported my idle and uh, idle aiming animation into the blender which is an amazing open source software used to create models and animations and all that kind of super cool stuff. And I created extra two animations aim up and aim down that I exported to my unity engines as separate individual animations. Back to Unity, we now need a mask to override an animation that we can control via a script, probably an avatar mask. So we create an avatar mask and name it spline. We use the skeleton of our female model to get the spine by only checking the spine and then checking the rest of the skeletal parts. We need an another layer. So we go back to our animator window and create a separate layer that we are going to prioritize over our base layer and let's name it aim layer. Now in our aiming layer we create our blend tree and name it aimer. You can name anything you want. That's going to be and it's going to be responsible for our aim up and aim down animations that we just created. We also add motion tree and assign our animations to it. If you notice right now our thresholds are automated. We don't want that. So we uncheck automate thresholds and assign our custom values as minus 90 and 90 degrees respectively. We created this layer to prioritize over the other but we still haven't done anything that would do so. So to achieve that which is pretty simple we just have to click on this black icon that looks like some sort of gear and adjust weight from 0 to 1 and we use our spline mask to assign here and now under blending option we don't really need to override this layer completely and then eliminate the rest but rather form a mixture of the two layers. So we switch to additive instead of override. Oof. 
Having sorted out our animator layers, now we need something that would act as a connecting medium between our animator and our mouse. That's where our parameters come into play. Let's create a new parameter for that and name it something like aiming angle or just aim angle and instead of input factor Z, we switch our parameter of this blend tree to aim angle. Let's try it out and something is fishy. Oh, we need to make some changes in our script. Let's comment out our Y input from our mouse controller script. Mm, okay, I'm moving my mouse in vertical direction, uh, but now it's not registering. Oh, we need to add an aimer script as well. So we create an empty game object under our player as a pivot point and name it aimer pivot. You can name anything again. I created a script and I attached it to our aim pivot game object. Let's open the script to see what's happening here. Alright, there are three scripts in play to achieve this effect. First, in player controller script, we set and adjust our animator values using the statement animator.setfloor. And that's it for this one. Then we move to mouse controller script and type this statement where we actually set the rotation in our player aimer script by passing our mouse y value every frame that's multiplied by a sensitivity of 10. You can use anything 10, 20, 30, it depends on your preference. No, our player aimer script is public and so it's accessible by other scripts. It also follows and obeys singleton pattern and overall it's good to have clean code rather than jumbled up stuff. Let's try it out now, shall we? And I run it. Well, 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 it's responding well to my mouse and you can set the sensitivity accordingly. Every player has their own sensitivity preference. So, yep, now we still do have camera issues though. We're almost there. Believe me, this is the final part. Looking back at PUBG's camera transitions, I realized at this moment that the camera that would fit our needs to achieve a similar camera effect is actually the free look camera as I've mentioned earlier in the beginning of this video. So let's just disable our virtual camera and create a free look camera from our Cinemachine tab and after adjusting my settings, I finally achieved the desired camera settings. Now for some final touches, we only need to have a hit point so that we know where the bullets are being hit. For that I need a particle system that would emit at the hit point of our ray and I've used the WFX B, B impact metal from our previously imported asset named WarFX. And now I open my ammunition script to just in instantiate the prefab on the particular hit point and destroy it in 3 seconds after it's instantiated. Let's try it out. Yay! Note, usually when multiple particles are instantiated repeatedly in a short time range, it's always good practice to use object pooling method. It saves us some performance by minimizing garbage allocations in the memory that would cause your system to slow down or you might notice reduced frame rates. There are amazing tutorials on YouTube on that, but for now we just instantiate and destroy. Okay, our mechanics are complete. Oh wait, our crosshair is in dynamic. Let's do it as up. Simple way to do this is to create a script that would detect player mouse and keyboard inputs and just change its size accordingly in the rec transform component of the UI element. What I did is instead of using my crosshair sprite that I created in Inkscape before, I replaced it with a simple 40x4 default circle but it didn't look good enough so I created a simple circle in Inkscape and imported it to my Unity project. And I made another UI image game object and named it crosshair sides. Created four, then I created four children that are anchored to each side of the crosshair sides. Then the crosshair script that I, I created is assigned to this game object and we set minimum and max size with delta speed and voila, that's how we achieve a shooting mechanic. Now that all the mechanic work is done, we just need to add cherry on the cake. And by that I mean a good environment around us. So I used this city model that I found on Sketchfab by Nebuchadnezzar. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but it's a beautiful, beautiful asset. 
and then I all I needed was to add colliders to it uh, so for base I used a box collider and for others I just used a mesh collider not using polygon or mesh colliders are more taxing on the performance so if you're looking to optimize it's still recommended to use multiple primitive colliders like box sphere cylinder etc in this case since there were too many children we just selected all and used mesh colliders to save some time hey like the video if you liked it dislike if you disliked it subscribe if you want to stay updated with that bell notification on and comment down what would you like to see next which mechanic from which game just comment down bye bye have a good day